we are going to ever so briefly um, go over the cranial nerves. And um, when I say ever so briefly, I mean that you do not need to know all the detail that's in Chapter 19 in the book. Um, we're just going to briefly go over each nerve. Um, and for the learning objectives, I just want you to be able to list the cranial nerves and their basic functions. So by that I mean like, oh, cranial nerve 1 is the olfactory nerve, and its basic function is smell. So <laughs> very um, straightforward, I hope. So um, there's tons and tons and tons of interesting stuff that the cranial nerves do, and there's tons of in um, interesting information in the chapter, um, but we are not going to um, cover that in this course. But just basically, the cranial nerves um, all originate from the brainstem, and they um, are basically the, um, the somatic nerve system for the head the somatic and autonomic nerve system for the head, they exchange information between the peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system. Um, they serve sensory, motor, and autonomic functions. And they differ from spinal nerves in specialization. So spinal nerves, you know, some of them are motor nerves, some of them are sensory nerves. Um, with the cranial nerves, some are only motor, some are only sensory, but some are both sensory and motor. And um, also some of them include autonomic fibers. So we'll talk, when we talk briefly about the individual nerves, um, we'll talk about which ones have which specializations. So there are four main functions of cranial nerves, and one of them is being the, and it, well, a couple of them are having to do with sort of being the um, peripheral nervous system for the head and face. So the cranial nerves supply motor innervation to the muscles of the face, eyes, tongue, jaw, and two of the neck muscles, um, and that's the spinal accessory nerve, and we already met that long ago um, in kinesiology, and probably you met it before that. But um, the cranial nerves also transmit somatosensory information from the skin and muscles of the face and from the TMJ, the temporomandibular joint. Um, they transmit special sensory information related to visual, auditory, vestibular, gustatory, which is taste, and olfactory and visceral sensations. So um, the cranial nerves are really involved in a lot of our survival um, behaviors and our survival responses, so um, they're pretty important. Um, they also provide parasympathetic regulation of pupil size, curvature of the lens of the eye, heart rate, blood pressure, breathing, and digestion. So super important little group of 12 nerves. So cranial nerve 1, and a lot of times you'll see them written as um, C, capital C, capital N, with the Roman numeral. So it would be C-N-I, you know, 1. Cranial nerve 1 is the olfactory nerve. It's a sensory nerve, not surprising. The sense of smell is dependent on olfactory nerve function, and much of the information attributed to taste is actually olfactory in origin because information from the taste buds is limited to chemoreceptors for salt, sweet, sour, and umami, and bitter. So um, the olfactory nerve is really the only um, sensory nerve that has a direct connection to the cerebral cortex. So that's kind of cool. Cranial nerve 2 is the optic nerve. The optic nerve is sensory, right? It's the vision sense. The retina is the inner layer of the posterior eye, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in Chapter 21 when we talk about vision. Um, light striking the retina is encoded, converted into neural signals by photosensitive cells. Um, visual signals sent to the midbrain are involved in reflexive responses of the pupil, awareness of light and dark, and orienting the head and eyes. So hugely important survival stuff here. Cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6. So they're, um, you know, obviously out of numerical order, but they all do um, eye motions. So there's three entire cranial nerves devoted to eye motions. Is this probably an important system? I think so. So the um, cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6, the oculomotor, the trochlear nerve, and the abducens nerve are primarily motor in function. Um, they contain motor neuron axons inter innervating the six extraocular muscles that move the eye and control reflexive constriction um, of the pupil. So really interesting. There are three nerves 
doing all um, all that stuff. So if you lost one of those nerves, if you lost function in one, you would still have some eye movement. It kind of shows you how important eye movements are in um, controlling, reacting with, and manipulating our environment. So the cranial nerve 5 is the trigeminal nerve. This is a hugely um, active and important nerve. Um, it's mixed. It contains both sensory and motor fibers. The sensory fibers transmit information from the face and TMJ. Um, and the trigeminal nerve is named for its three branches, the ophthalmic, maxillary, and mandibular. Uh, mandibular excuse me. So um, the trigeminal nerve um, is one of the, the nerves that's involved in the generation of migraine headaches when you have dysfunction in the trigeminal nerve. So um, it's uh, interesting that sensation from the face generates that um, headache. But when you look at the muscles it innervates, it sort of makes sense. The um, cranial nerve 7 is the facial nerve, and it innervates a lot of the um, facial muscles um, of, for facial expression, and also most of the glands in the head. Um, it also conveys sensory information from the posterior ear canal and taste from the anterior tongue. So lots of different stuff going on in the facial nerve. Um, it carries efferent signals for the corneal reflex. And um, signals to and from cranial nerve 7 are processed in um, nuclei located in the pons, medulla, and upper spinal cord. So the upper spinal cord and the brain stem. Um, cranial nerve 8 is the vestibulocochlear nerve. So there are two distinct branches. The vestibular branch transmits information related to head position and head movement from the vestibular apparatus in the inner ear. The cochlear branch transmits information related to hearing, hearing from <clears throat> the cochlea in the inner ear. So the peripheral receptors for these functions are located in the inner ear, and the labyrinth um, consists of the vestibular apparatus and the cochlea. Two very distinct functions, um, but they run on the same nerve. Cranial nerve 9 is the glossopharyngeal nerve. It's a mixed nerve containing both sensory and motor fibers. Sensory fibers transmit somatosensation from the soft palate and pharynx and information from the taste receptors in the posterior tongue. So interesting that um, the taste receptors in the tongue are divided into anterior and posterior, and there are two different nerves that handle that information. Um, the motor component of the uh, cranial nerve 9 innervates the pharyngeal muscle and the um, parotid sa uh, salivary gland. So very um, important in um, eating and swallowing, so glossopharyngeal nerve. Um, the cr uh, cranial nerve 10 is a huge, huge important um, functional nerve. It provides afferent and efferent innervation of the larynx, pharynx, and viscera. Um, Far-reaching connections allow the vagus to um, decrease heart rate, constrict the bronchi, affect speech production, and increase digestive activity. A motor function um, for the cranial nerve 10 is um, tested by eliciting the gag reflex. So there are tests for all these different cranial nerve functions that doctors will, um, uh, neurologists and other doctors will do um, on the, um, they're, they're looking for, they're testing nerve function. So on the body, um, they're, te they're doing um, sensory and motor testing on the different dermatomes and myotomes. In the head, they're doing these cranial nerve tests. Um, the cranial accessory nerve is cranial nerve 11, or the spinal accessory nerve, and it provides innervation to the um, trapezius and sternocleidomastoid muscles. So it originates in the spinal accessory nucleus in the upper cervical cord, not that you need to know that, but it travels through upward through the foramen magnum and then leaves the skull through the jugular foramen. So it's the only one that originates outside the cranium, goes back in, and then comes back out. Um, the cell bodies are um, in the ventral horn of the spinal cord at levels C1 to C4. So um, the, they perform that function of turning the head towards something. So we talked about when we were talking about the sensory tracts, um, we talked about the um, spinomesencephalic tract, um, turning the head towards the source of pain. Well, here's the, here's the source of action for that head turning.
The um, 12th cranial nerve is the hypoglossal nerve. It provides innervation to the intrinsic and extrinsic muscles of the ipsilateral tongue. So um, all of the cranial nerves, just like everything in the um, brain and spinal cord, has two sides. So we have two of each of the 12. So the right side of the hypoglossal, the right hypoglossal nerve innervates the right side of the tongue and the left hypoglossal nerve innervates the left side of the tongue. So one of the, the tests for this is that, um, they have you stick out your tongue and if it goes to one side or the other, you can see if there's damage on one side. Um, the cell bodies of the hypoglossal um, nerve are in the uh, a nucleus in the medulla. It's the hypoglossal nucleus. Um, it's controlled by both voluntary and reflexive neural circuits. So um, pretty interesting. So cranial nerves, really, I just want you to know their basic functions, um, and that's it.